Welcome, listeners. I will be your host for this evening and for as long as there's breath in my body. It's time now to bring me your trials, no matter how strange or unbelievable. The lines are open. Hello? Hello, caller. You're on the air. My name is Beverly. I'm calling from my bedroom closet. What seems to be the problem? I'm having relationship issues with my mother. Mother Mother-daughter relationships are fraught. My whole life, my mother told me I wouldn't amount to anything. She didn't like my clothes, the way I talked, the boys I dated. It didn't matter how hard I tried, she was never satisfied. Since I couldn't make her happy, I decided to not even try. I dropped out of high school, got pregnant, started working at Edison's Bagels. Hmm, I do appreciate a good bagel. I cut my finger on some frozen spinach in the cream cheese and never told anyone. Oh. Out of spite? That's right. But after a few years of that, I decided to get my life together. I got my GED, stopped smoking, and put my daughter in 4-H so she could learn some life skills. Good for you. Angie's pumpkin bread got second at the state fair. And you know what my mother said? What? She said she got second. Ah. But I kept at it. I took night classes and worked my way up to managing two locations in the greater Topeka area. And now, ten years after dropping out of high school, I've been accepted into veterinary program at Colorado State. But even this accomplishment did not warrant a kind word from your mother? Well, this is where it gets complicated. See, when I went to my mother's apartment to show her my acceptance letter, I found her dead in her armchair, Fox News on the TV, That in itself was not too surprising. The woman had arteries of stone. But why did she have to die now? Right before I could rub my success in her face. But then I thought about one of the concepts I'd been exploring with Angie in 4-H. The reanimation of dead tissue using everyday household items. The plan was to bring my mother back for a brief moment so I could show her my acceptance letter, burn the look on her face into my mind, and then unplug her and let her rest in peace. I put my mother's body on the kitchen table, prepared the solution, and dug the toaster out of the bottom drawer. But when I brought my mom back, she wasn't my mom. I showed her the acceptance letter, and instead of being impressed or even snide, she she ate the letter and then tried to eat my hand. I unplugged the toaster, but she didn't die. She kept coming after me slack-jawed and slobbering. I ran into my room, but she broke down the door. Then I hid in my closet, but she's still coming. She's almost broken through. I hear you, Beverly. Listen to me. It may feel like you're the only person struggling with this, but let me assure you, you are not. We're never alone in our suffering, Beverly. And though you've zombified your mother's corpse, it's not too late for some- She's pounded a hole in the door with her bare fists. Mom, mom, I made it to vet school. Mom, stop trying to eat me for one second and listen! Listen to me, Beverly. It's perfectly natural for you to want affection and validation from your mother, but... It's a very competitive program! Beverly! What? The ones we love most in our lives sometimes fall short of the people we need them to be. No! Your mother, in death as in life, is not capable of giving you the validation, the love... No! ...you yearn for. No! Now listen to me. This is what you need to do. What objects are with you in the closet? Anything heavy? Anything you could use as a weapon? There's an umbrella. That will have to do. Now, first, forgive your mother. Forgive your mother, knowing that you will find inside yourself the strength you were looking for. I forgive you, Mom! Good. Now grab the umbrella and bash your mother in the head. Bash her, Beverly. Make your bedroom a kaleidoscope of brains. Ah! Keep bashing, Beverly, (laughs) and forgive! Bash! Forgive! Ah! Bash, forgive! (laughs) I'm proud of you, Beverly. Thank you. Thank you. Now go forward. Live the wonderful life you've made for yourself. Go confident and free. What an amazing woman. May we all have the strength of Beverly. The strength to forgive those who have harmed us and let us down, who in their own struggles and sufferings have not lived up to who we needed them to be. May we all have the courage to let go.